I think we are back. Um, I just need some uh, people to um, help me to confirm that we are back. Okay. Um, Adura Israel, can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? You're in a very noisy place. Aisha, can you hear me? Aisha, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, okay. Thank you. So you can mute your mic back. Okay, so I'm sorry um, for the network error and um, so, so sorry, but we must move on no matter what we are still going to move on and try and make um, progress today. Okay, so from what I was sharing the other time, um, I said from that particular Excel, I said there are six ones, okay? Simply because from that Excel, we have six different times that this particular variable change and uh, change sign. So now looking at the number of times the variable, the, the series, the error term change sign, that does not um, actually um, um, tell us that there is auto correlation or there is no auto correlation, okay? So yeah. Sophia, there's no way you can hear because you did not join with your audio. So don't worry, bring down your hand. There's no way you can hear. You need to join with your audio. All right. Okay. So that tells us the number of times that this particular series changes sign. All right. How many positive times and as well as negative times. So looking at this series, there is no way we can actually decide that there is auto correlation or there is no auto correlation all right there's a need for us to conduct a formal test on that run to actually know is there auto correlation or not so from my um slide okay the null hypothesis from my slide is that there is no auto correlation that there is no presence of randomness and then the alternative hypothesis is that there is auto correlation. So how do we conduct the test? For us to conduct the test, as I was saying um, before the network, we had an each on a network. Remember, I said that for us to conduct a test, you can recall in your OLS in year two, sorry, when you were uh, when I taught you hypothesis test, and I said that your T statistics all right will always be equals to what your mean okay over the standard error of your what of your variable okay standard error of your variable okay the mean over the standard error so that means whenever i want to test for a new particular what series all i need to do is first of all find the mean and then the second one i will find the standard deviation then I will find the T statistics and I can now test my mean. For the runs, the mean of the runs, okay, is equals to 2N1 times N2 over N plus 1. All right. And then the variance of that runs is equals to. 
n one times n two open a bracket two n one okay times n two okay minus capital n all right minus capital n all over okay n square n square and um n minus one okay okay all right so this is the mean of that runs while this is the variance of the what of the run so i would save this now all right let me see okay okay um so i will save this okay so i've saved this so that i can recall this particular um this particular um, um particular slide all right so i've been able to identify the mean of my runs and then the variance of my runs okay let me stop sharing now how do i define n1 and how do i define n2 in my next um, slide n is equal to the total number of observations that we have okay n1 is the number of positive symbols n2 is the number of negative symbols r is the number of runs of course from our r we discovered that r is six okay so n is the total number of observations n1 is the number of positive symbols n to the number of negative symbols so we go back to our excel sheet from our excel sheet let's count how many positive symbols we have um let's count negative negative is smaller we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 negatives. So that means N2 is equals to 20. That's it. N2 is equals to 20. But what is N? Remember, N is from 1981 down to 2019. Okay. And that is uh, 20. 19 okay minus 1981 remember you will add one to it that's 39 so that means n is what 39 n is equals to 39 so if n is 39 n2 is 20 that means n1 will be what 39 minus 20 and that is what 19 all right so from my formula remember my formula i've been able to get n1 n2 and then n um total n all right and i know that r is equals to what six so from here i can now begin to solve all right remember from the formula don't worry i'll send the slide and the formulas to you the formula says that the mean okay what's the mean the mean is equals to two times n1 times n2 over n plus one so that means the mean is equals to what two all right times n1 what is n1 oh sorry um n1 is 19 let me use my jaw to make it fast n1 is 19 n2 is 20 n is 39 so this is a uh, n1 this is n2 this is n then this is r r is what r is uh, six okay so that means that my mean is equals to what two all right equals to two times n1 times n2 okay i close the bracket all right over over um n what is n n is this okay then i have plus one that means my mean is 20.48 okay then what's the standard deviation the standard deviation um 
from the formula, all right, is what? Is equals to um, two times N1, okay, times N2, okay, um, and then I have a bracket of another two times N1 times N2, okay, minus N, okay, using the formula, the formula is in Gujarati, you can see it in page 433, all right, um, two N1 times N2, all right, this, this, uh, okay, and then we have, we close the bracket, okay, and then I close the bracket, then I have over, all right, over what? N square, that's N times N, okay? Then I have another bracket, I have another bracket, and that bracket is what? Um, N minus one, I close this bracket, I close this bracket, and I solve. Oh, there's an error. It's equals to two n one times n two. Open a bracket. Two n one times n two minus q four minus thirty nine. Close the bracket over q four times q four. Then q four minus one. Let me just close one of the brackets and see. Okay, I can easily use my calculator, sorry. And we can make it faster. And that is two times N1 is 19, times N2 is 20, all right? And that is 760, okay? I have another two times N1 is 19, times N2 is 20. That's 760 minus N minus 39 okay that's 721 times 760 so the numerator is um the numerator is um 547960 then let's look at the denominator so for the denominator the denominator is um n square that's 39 times 39 39 times 39 all right then times n minus 1 n minus 1 that's 38 so the denominator is 5 7 5 7 9 8 okay so this is now equals to this over this all right so that means my standard that means my standard deviation is 9.48 from the um, calculation, okay? The mean is 20.48718. The standard division is 9.48, all right? So remember, sorry, this is the variance. I'm sorry, this is the variance, okay? Remember that the standard deviation is now the square root of the word variance. So that means I will just square root this. Raised to power, 0 0.5, I will square root it. So the standard division is 3.08, all right? So I will need to take note of it that, I will need to take note of it that the mean is 20.48718, the variant, the standard division is 3.08, all right? Okay, so I will go back to my uh whiteboard okay now you will now see that 
the t statistics all right is equals to what your mean of your runs over the standard deviation that is what 20 over 48718 over what 3.08 that means if I do this division, okay, 20.48718, 20.48718 divided by 3.08. So that means the T statistics of the runs is 6.65. 6.65 all right so that means from my estimation the t statistics is 6.65 if that is the case i can now make my decision remember in your year two i already taught you that when the t statistics okay when the t statistics is greater than two with your rule of thumb, you reject your null hypothesis. And if your t statistics is less than two, with your rule of thumb, you do what? You accept the null hypothesis. So that means from this particular um, expression, you can conclude that we'll do what? Reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is what? Auto correlation in the what? In the model. So, what has happened, what has really happened now is that from my slide, using the informal way, graphical, there is a sign of positive autocorrelation. Now, using the formal way, your runs, we are able to reject the null hypothesis that there is no autocorrelation and accept the alternative that there is what? Auto correlation using the Ross test. So that means from our Ross test and our graphical method, we are agreeing on the same thing that there is what? Auto correlation. The third method we now want to use is the Dobbin Watson test. Okay. So, but before then, I don't know if any one of you have any question that you want to ask um, based on the two methods I've explained. The informal test, using that graph, you compare your error term at one period and your error term at the other period. If there's a unique pattern, then you conclude there is also correlation. Then the second one I've done now is the runs test, when you compare. All right? Okay. So, um, Please, Usman, what's your question? Usman, you have been unmuted. What is your question? You raised your hand. Okay, no question. All right, so let me check the chat box. Somebody said, um, how do we get the T critical? All right, the T critical can also be approximated to your normal distribution, which is your 1.96 at 5%, if you remember your year T. Uh -huh. But under this case, there is no need for getting the T critical. You can use your rule of thumb. Remember that in your rule of thumb, you don't need T critical. All you need is your T statistics. And once your T statistics is greater than two, you reject. What you need to do is check the number of runs you have. How many positive do we have? How many negative do we have? Then from there, you should be able to do what? Then calculate your mean and calculate your what? Your standard deviation and you can then divide. All right, so that means there is no question I move to the second one, which is the Dobbin-Watson test for auto correlation, all right? In the Dobbin-Watson test, you must first of all understand that for Dobbin-Watson, Dobbin-Watson assumes that it is auto correlation of first order. That's what you must assume. And what do I mean by it's auto correlation of first order? Dr. Watson assumed that the auto correlation that exists is between this current period 
and the previous period. That the relationship that exists is between this current error term and the past error term, or between the last error term and the last two error term. It did not account for a relationship that exists between the error term for this year and the error term for two previous periods. No, it did not account for it. So what do I mean? For Dobbin Watson, the Watson assumed that it is autocorrelation of this nature. Okay, error term t is equals to rho u t minus one. It is just between the current period and the previous period. You can also say it is between the error term u t minus one in relation to what u t minus two. It does not account for the relationship between u t mu t and mu t minus two, no. It did not account for relationship between the current error term mu t and mu t minus six. No, it did not account for that. So, Dobbin Watson developed a statistic called D. That D establishes a relationship between your row, okay? Now, if you look at this equation, this equation one now, if your row is statistically significant, I, I, I believe you must have been taught hypothesis testing. I believe so, you have been taught. So I, I, I need, don't need to talk too much on that. If your row is statistically significant, you will conclude that there is a relationship between this mu t and mu t minus one. That means there's autocorrelation. But if your role is statistically insignificant, that means there is no relationship. Dobbin Watson developed D as a statistic. All right, Dobbin Watson developed what? D as what? A statistic. And Dobbin Watson used that D to create a relationship between your role and the value. Okay? So what did he do? Let me just assume this role of first order. But the Watson said that your D is equal to two into one minus rho. Remember, if there is a perfect positive autocorrelation relationship between this mu t and this mu t minus one, your rho will be equal to one. This rho can be likened to your correlation coefficient of R. Remember that when R is one, there is perfect positive correlation. That's statistics. You can liken that R to this rule such that when your rule is equal to one, you can liken it and say there is perfect positive autocorrelation. When your rule, all right, is equal to minus one, you can say that there is what? Perfect negative autocorrelation. Why? Because your role is likened to your R in your correlation coefficient, and meaning there's perfect negative. And if role is equals to zero, that means there's no relationship between this error term and this mu t minus one. You can then conclude that there is no relationship, there's no correlation between the two. So if role equals to one, you substitute it into this equation. It becomes d equals to two into one minus one. One minus one is zero. Zero times two, that's zero. So when the role is equals to, um, role equals to one, what would be d? d will be equals to what? Zero. When the role is equals to minus one, okay, what would be d? d will be equals to four. D will be equals to four. Oh, sorry. D will be equals to four. And then when your role is equals to zero, that means your D will be equals to what? Two. So that means in the Dobbin Watson statistics, if D equals to zero, it means there is perfect positive autocorrelation. If D equals to four, it means there is perfect negative autocorrelation. If D is equals to two, it means there is no autocorrelation. Remember, when your D is zero, 
your roll is equals to one. When your D is four, your roll equals to minus one. When your D is two, your roll equals to zero. The D equals to zero point two are like in pari passu with your role when you are discussing your correlation. So that means once you can calculate D in your series, you can determine if there is auto correlation or not. So a D that is 2.1 can be approximated to two and you conclude there is no auto correlation. A D that is 2.4 is approximated to two you can say there is no auto correlation. The D is the Dobbin Watson test. And then a D of four, you can say, oh, there's perfect negative auto correlation. And if D is equals to, say, 3.6, that is approximated to four. And you can say there is what? Perfect negative, close to I negative auto correlation. The next question now is how do we calculate? our d okay for us to calculate our d d is equals to summation the current error term minus previous error term and then you square it over current error term square yeah look at that formula d is equals the current error term minus previous error term all squared over summation of the error term squared. That is it, okay? So from there, I can now try to calculate. I can easily calculate the up one using my series I've gotten. Current error term minus what? Previous error term, okay? So let's go back to our Excel, 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 all right? I go back to my Excel, okay? So let me just copy this error term um, and take it to slide two so that I wouldn't make mistake, okay? So this is my current error term. My previous error term is just UT minus one, Abby. That means I will copy all of this. Remember, I will lose the last degree of freedom. Copy all of this and paste here, okay? The next thing, remember the up one says what? Mu t minus what? Mu t minus one, that is the up one. That is, here should be equal to what? This minus this, Abby. And then I will drag it down. I've gotten mu t minus mu t minus one. The next thing is now, mu t minus mu t minus one squared, Abby. And that means I will just square this particular one equals to this times this, I will just square it. So once I square it, I have all of this, okay? That means if I sum all of this, that gives me the what? The numerator, have you seen it? Sum of all of this is my numerator, okay? The denominator is what? Mu t squared. And that is equals to what? This squared, this times what? This, that's this squared. And what will I do? I will also do what? Drag it down, okay? If I sum all of this, so this is, summation this one is summation what mu t square this one is what summation what mu t minus mu t minus one so my d will then be what will be equal to this over this look at my d my d is 0 0.271 so if my D is 0 0.271 from my analysis, what will be my conclusion? My conclusion would therefore be that D is equal to 0 0.271. D is approximated to zero. And since D is approximated to zero, there is 
perfect, close to perfect positive autocorrelation. You can now see that using a formal test is showing a what? A high positive autocorrelation. Look at it. Using the Ross test. The Ross test also shows we reject our hypothesis that there is no autocorrelation. We conclude that there is autocorrelation. All right. Also, using the DW, DW shows that it is 0 0.271. Um, okay. You will see that from my equation I estimated in my um, in my Excel, in my e-views. You will see my D, look at it, 0 0.2828. This 0 0.28 is also closely, Abby, is the same thing as what I have here, which is very close to, to the same. Just um, approximation um, calculations is just what that renders it different. So that is how you calculate your D. Okay. And that is how you calculate your runs test. All right. The last one is the Bruch Godfrey test. So let me see if um, we have anybody that has um, a question. So that um, so that um, I can um, nobody. Oh, Solomon. Okay. Um, Bolaji Olatunde, your question, please. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Go straight, please, to the question. Yeah, for the for the um, calculation you did of UT minus UT minus one. Yes. Sir. Since for in the data, since for 1981, there is no um, there is no that change yeah. is absent. Should yeah. we shouldn't we exclude it from the calculation of the WRC? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So wait, let me. That's true. Is it part? Is it included? Oh. Okay. So I need to delete this. Yeah, that's true. So he's just reducing it, but it doesn't make any significant um, change. All right. Okay, it doesn't sir. make any significant change, even when you delete. Thank you. Okay. Next person, you can meet now. Uh, Destiny, please. What's your question? Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I want to ask if the um, formula for the Dobbin Watson. Yeah. The um, numerator summation ut minus ut minus one. Does it have yes. a square? Yes, all squared. All squared. Is all squared. Is all squared. Can you hear me? Yeah, is all squared. Okay. Okay, because I don't. I, I don't think you. Is all square. That was why, you know, this one was ut minus ut minus one. Then this one is ut minus ut minus one squared. This is where you now square it. Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you. Um, Moyo, please. What's your question? Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, so I wanted to ask if the D comes like, if the D, can the D come that the coefficient to be three? So at that point, what are we going to do? Yeah, I will go back to, I will explain now. All right, so um, what happens now is that if D is three, okay, when D is three, we can also say that, um, there is close to a negative autocorrelation. We can say that. But you need to be specific because we have some regions whereby you can't make a decision. There are some regions you get to 
you cannot make a decision. And with that, there is a need for you to be specific. And that is why Gordon Watson developed a further test, a further boundary that we can use in case we don't know how to specifically make our decision, especially when we are those borderlines. Now, the Dobbin Watson developed some D values for lower degree of freedom and upper degree of freedom. So we have DL, DU, DL, DU, okay? Now you have your D. And then from your D, all you need to do is very simple. Go to the D statistics table. There's a D statistics. Check the back of your Gujarati textbook. I don't want to waste too much time on this because we have other things to do. Check the back of your Gujarati textbook. You will see the DL values and DU values for every degree of freedom. All right? Your degree of freedom N minus 1. When you check it, all right, you compare that degree DL and DU. Use this particular chart that you are seeing on this slide to make your decision. In that case, if your DL is greater than D, greater than zero, you must reject that there is no positive autocorrelation. That means there is positive autocorrelation. If your D is between DU and DL, all right, you will not have a decision to make. That means you are indecisive. There is no decision made. And then if your D is less than four, but greater than four minus DL, you reject that there is no negative autocorrelation. That means there is negative autocorrelation. And then if your D is between four minus DL and four minus D, there is also no decision. While if your D is less than four minus D and less than greater than D, you conclude that there is no, you do not reject that there is no autocorrelation, either positive or negative. So this particular boundary has helped us to actually be specific in our decision when we are trying to explain whether there is what autocorrelation or there is no autocorrelation. All right. Having said this, I believe that has answered your question. Let's look at the last one. The last one is Bruce Godfrey Pagan. Okay. Bruce Godfrey Pagan test. In the Bruce Godfrey Pagan test, that one is used when you have auto correlation of higher order. In that case, you cannot begin to compare the relationship between error 10, 2019 and error 10, 2015. That is how many years ago? Four years back, okay? In that case, you will log it up to four places. So Bruce Godfrey Pregan developed his own test. Very simple, okay? But you can only know how to estimate that using your e-views. What did Bruce Godfrey Pregan say? He just said a very simple thing. He said, your OLS, estimate it, step one. Step two, find the error term. We have done that. We've gotten the error term, okay? Step three, estimate this equation. One, let's assume that our error term, we are lagging it up to four places. Let's assume we are lagging it up to four places. Estimate the equation of ut is equals to rule one. U T minus one plus roll two. U T minus two plus roll three. U T minus three plus roll four. U T minus four. Okay. Then you include your explanatory variables. And what are your explanatory variables? Of course. Beta one what exchange rate plus beta two what government expenditure 
plus beta 3 what investment plus beta 4 inflation plus beta 5 what um what is the next thing exchange rate investment trade balance estimate this model once you estimate the model you get your coefficient of determination which is your r square i believe you have done coefficient of determination so you know your r square however estimate this model and generate your what r square okay so what do i do i will need to go back to my e views okay i go to my e views i go to my e views all right remember this is the error term this is the error term okay but i can't use this error term i need to save it so i will just copy the value control c control v and i'll save it new t this is the error term i'll save it okay so what do i do i will go and estimate the model as i've said new t all right estimate it respect to new t remember lag it minus one new t minus two new t minus three and new t minus four plus sorry then including my explanatory variable what are my explanatory variables exchange rates remember log investment remember log government expenditure and then i have what inflation and what trade balance estimate all right i've estimated what's my r square this is my r square that's what i'm interested in 0 0.841 that's my r square my r square is what 0 0.841 my r square is 0 point what 841 so my r square is equals to 0 0.841 i will test my null hypothesis this r square can be approximated to a chi square and the chi squares are approximated as what? N minus rho times R square should be my chi square. I've taught you chi square in year two. So I like this class because most of the things I've taught you in year two, you are doing it now. Okay, so I don't need to make noise in that one. That means my chi square should therefore be equal to what? What's N? N is 39. What's rho? Numbers of lags. I like them up to four times r square was my r square 0 0.841 that means my chi square is what 39 minus 4 times 0 0.841 and that is what 29.4 29.0 sorry and that's um equals to 29.4 this is my chi square you remember how to test for chi square now go to your year two test book and check remember your chi critical is n minus one your n is 39 compare that value and what you have here definitely you are going to reject the null hypothesis because the null hypothesis is that there is no auto correlation of higher order and the alternative hypothesis is that what there is auto correlation of the higher order and that is all you have for what bruce what Godfrey test. Questions, please, before I do the final one. Correcting for autocorrelation. Now we know that this model is sick. How do we now correct for it? Let's give the model injection so that the model will be aware from autocorrelation. The model will no longer have a problem of autocorrelation. So let's give that model injection. Questions, please. So if there is no question, nobody is raising hand. That means Etim Morwegon. Is that the meaning? So all of you know it very well. You have okay, you have even done tutorial on it before. That's good. How do we correct for auto correlation? Okay. 
to correct for it. One, we assume when the role that causes auto correction is known. Two, when that role is not known. If the role is not known, there's nothing we, we can do three or four things. That is beyond your level. Okay, in your your photos are this in your photo, you teach them and your masters. But we are only going to limit ourselves to when the role is known. When the role that causes auto correction is known, what you do, you transform it. When you transform it, that is what we call what your G L S. Once you transform it, that is your word G L S. Okay. So, what do you do when you know that role that causes autocorrelation? Okay. The first thing you do is this. Just to take that step, you can practice it at home. All right. The first thing is. You know that one that causes autocorrelation, that rule is known. That means the autocorrelation is of this order. Say ut equals to rule ut minus one. That means you have found the value of rule. Okay. The first step you are going to do is to lag your equation. Assuming your equation is yt is equals to beta zero plus beta one xt plus your error term. Step one, lag this model. You now have yt minus one is equals to beta zero plus beta one, xt minus one plus the error term, ut minus one. Step two, multiply the second equation by rho. It becomes what? Rho yt minus one is equals to rho beta zero, plus rule what beta one xt minus one all right plus rule mu t minus one step three subtract this equation all right from this equation when you subtract it you now have what y o you now have a You will now have yt if you follow it. Okay. Here's the. You have yt. Okay. So I just want you to, to see what I'm saying. You have yt minus rho yt minus one. That's for this part. It's equals to beta zero minus rho beta zero. Okay. If I'm correct, I think so. Yeah. And then I would then have, I would then have plus beta one XT minus rho beta one XT minus one plus mu T minus rho mu t minus one you see that means you already have that error remember that your factor that causes that auto correlation was what was what mu t is equals to what rho mu t minus one plus this error term is white noise is free from auto correlation and this error term equals to what this minus this that means this error term in this new model is the same thing as this particular error term. And that means this error term is free from auto correlation. So you can try that um, um, at home. That will help because there is no enough time. And I don't want somebody to come and uh, crucify me. So as usual, please type your matric number on your on the chat box now. While if you have a question, let me know, please. Type the matric number on the chat box. And if you have a question, let me know. Please ask question, no. Please, let me unmute so that you can ask your question. Please, I am begging you, ask question. Don't be so eager for matric number, matric number. 
ask question. Question. Solomon, unmute yourself. Are you there? I'm here, sir. Let me come Johnson. What is the question? Did you hear very Solomon? Did you hear me very well? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Mr. Ben Johnson, yes, please, your question. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. My question is I didn't quite understand the remedial measure. Step two and step two. Yeah, I was trying to rush because of your time. You first step is you specify your model. Like that model. Step one. Step two, what is that model with your rule? Step two, subtract that new equation from the previous one. That gives you the particular transform model. I wish I can have more time. Maybe I'll explain it another time. Please, Oladi Bolosin, your question, please. Yes, sir. My question was similar to what was asked before. I didn't quite understand. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe what I'll do is in our next class, I will try to quickly um, talk on that. Please. I have another class now, so I want to um, do an Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, no problem, sir. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. Who is talking? We is talking. I appreciate you, sir. Oh, where? Thank God, if you are not in market, okay, I'm recording. Thank God, you are not in marketplace. G day, you are in a noisy place. You want to talk? No. Okay. Oh, bomb. I can see oh, you, are, you, know, are, you are enjoying. You lie down, you are enjoying. Oh, where? Yes, you are looking like a serious student. You are sitting and you are, you are enjoying the class. I like that. Somewhere you are enjoying too. Happy enjoyment. Okay. You put a vote type your this thing, your matric number. Okay, so um, in the absence of no other question, and everybody has typed his or matric number, please make sure you type your matric. You go. You've done the attendance on online. Please make sure you have did that attendance on online. Good afternoon, sir. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Please, sir, we have been trying to go online oh, to send the attendance, but it's not auntie, working, sir. Auntie, make sure you fill that attendance online. That is what I said. No problem. I've said it. I won't say it again. Make sure you we'll try our best, sir. And you fill that online. In the absence of no other question, enjoy your life while you are young. 